All right, let's move to Sunday afternoon. This is the last of the um, this is the last of the playoff games of the wild card weekend. This is the Seahawks minus two and a half at the Eagles. It's three forty p.m. on NBC, and I mean let's let's start off with where the money is. Sixty six percent of the offshore tickets are on Seattle. It opened as a pick 'em, and it is now two and a half. Uh, you can find it one and a half some spots, two in some spots. Uh, two and a half in several other ones, some of the bigger ones. Uh, in Vegas, it is 84% of the tickets on Seattle. I mean, that's a, that's absurd. That's, a, <laughs> that's, that is insane. And it makes you think, uh, maybe, maybe this is not right. You know, I love the Eagles here. I love, I haven't, I, you know how much I have crapped on them all year and I have hated on this team. Yeah. I love, Love, love of Philadelphia in this spot right here. Philly is uh, is ex- what, well, according to the analytics bunch, Philly should be a one point seven eight point favorite. So Seattle hasn't played a normal game all year. Every game they have played has come down to the very last play, the very last minute, and it's always been some weird crap that's happened to get us to the situation we're in and to finish the game. Week 17 was no different. We finished the game in home field advantage and the division winner in the NFC West came down to inches, literal inches of where a guy was when his elbow hit the ground, his forearm hit the ground. And and I, this is going to be no different. And you're telling me I get to start off at home. I get the home team catching points. Yeah. And I think it's going to be crazy anyway. I don't know what the Seattle team is going to look like. I know this. Everybody's excited about Marshawn. Marshawn hasn't played football in like two years. What are yeah. we doing? Yeah, uh, you're you're right. Uh, I mean, is he just going to come off the, the, the street and just take the rock and run? He, he didn't. I mean, he he played last week. He wasn't anything to write home about, but he did at least no. give him some threat. No. Um, I will say this. I mean, Seattle went to the Eagles uh, on November 24th and won by eight. Uh, However, they did lose three of their last four, and they played at the Panthers on December 15th and only won by six. Yep. So, you know, they they got beat 28-12 to by the Rams. They got beat 27-13 to by Arizona. That one was at home. And then they lost 26-21 to San Francisco in the last game of the year. Um, they, They didn't look good late. I'll so, say that. so the Eagles, here's one of the reasons I like the Eagles, okay? Let me tell you why. Okay. I think offensively they have figured this thing out, okay? They've got so many guys hurt and they've got so many guys injured. Their, their wide receivers are a shell of themselves. But at some point in time they went and found tape from New England back in the day when they didn't have any wide receivers, but they got two really good tight ends. And amazing. Hey, let's run the football and then let's use our tight ends to open up the middle of the, the, the whole uh, the, the, the defense, so the middle of the field's wide open all day long. So, so you can throw underneath passes constantly to Ertz and Goddard, who are unbelievable tight ends, by the way. And then and then that opens it up, and Miles Sanders has become an absolute man. And this defense for the for the Eagles, they're getting better every week. They're getting healthier every week. And I just think they're ready to roll. I don't think this team is going to make a run like the team of the, you know, of, of the Super Bowl year, but I think they can beat Seattle. I yeah. absolutely think that. I think the worst thing that could have happened to Philadelphia was Seattle winning against the 49ers. Yeah, I, I think you're I think you're probably right. Cuz I think if the 49ers are coming in here, we're looking at a a 5 to 6 point home dog line. And and, and I think I think Seattle or uh, San Francisco yeah. probably covers it. Oh, I would cut and I would bet San Francisco all day. Yeah. I'd be betting them all day. I think this Eagles team is different, and I also think I think the Seahawks are so much smoke and mirrors right now. Well, I think so with the Seahawks, like they they continue to try and run the ball too much. Like it, it's it I, we thought because they've got so many backs injured and whatnot that okay, well now you've got a perfect reason to go out and let Russell be Russell, right? And and they continue. I think the only time their offense looks good or they make any offensive plays is when Russell just – the play breaks down and he's just yes. <laughs> improvising. That's it. But that's not a sustainable offense against, against a good defense. Uh, agreed. You, you just can't do that. 
No, I, I That's agree the playoffs. With you. you damn sure can. But but if you say you go in and rather than focus on the run as much as they do, because they they are still like a sixty to forty run. So to you pass think they're going to change what they've done all season? No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying oh. they will continue to do what they've done all season, which has has cost them. That's right. Um, because they, I mean, other than the games that they lose, like the games that they win, are all close, close games. Oh, the games that every they, game they lose is close too. By the no, way, well, not, they're, not all, they're all field goal games. That's, well, okay. So the last, um, let's see, Seattle. All right. So they lost by five against San Francisco, but before that, they got beat twenty-seven to thirteen by Arizona. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That game was an ass kicking. But that game, we found out early on that game did not matter before it even kicked off. Right. And then, of course, they go to Carolina the week before that. They win by six against a horrific Carolina yes. Panthers team. Uh, just a bad, bad yeah. Carolina Panthers team. And then the week before that, they lost at the Rams 28-12. to Like, they got smoked in that game. Uh, against True. the Vikings, they win 37-30. to at Philadelphia, they win 17-9. At San Francisco, 27-24. Against Tampa Bay, 40-30. Everything's one possession. Yep. So, But when they lose, like they lost to Baltimore, 30-16. to Yeah, that so, was an ass kicking. Uh, they beat the Rams early in the season, 30-29, to and probably should have lost that game. That's so, right. That's right. That's the game where the Rams kicker missed a pretty easy f- uh, extra point or field goal. It was a, it was a field goal. It was okay. a field goal at the a very last play of the game that just went wide right. So... Yep. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I think the way that Seattle is going, and they, I mean, a lot of these wild card matchups where they go in as the wild card, uh, they, they haven't done great in these spots. True. Uh, I'm, I think I'm rolling with you with the Eagles. Like, I, I yeah. think the Eagles should be favored here. They've won I four straight. They're playing with confidence. I think you're right. I think they got it figured out. Like, yeah. I, you, you don't need wide receivers. So some. Some guy on Twitter that's that's some writer or whatever that likes to talk numbers talked about how, for the first time ever, a quarterback threw for 4,000 yards this year in Carson Wentz, yep. but didn't have a receiver over 500 yards. I was like, wait a minute. That was an that's N- not how math works. That was an that NBC doesn't, stat. That doesn't, that doesn't have oh, – oh, oh, he's specifically taking the position of wide receiver in – Everyone else that catches the ball doesn't matter. I was like, well, I bet Tom Brady's had plenty of those because we've had plenty of years where nobody catches the ball but Gronk and seven running backs. Yeah. Well, but uh, you're, you're going to have, you know, Edelman will get 500. Yeah. He, okay. Know. He'll have one guy that, that'll yeah. get it sometime to help boost it up a little bit. But just to act like they don't have anybody to throw to, our Ertz and Goddard might be two of the best receivers on the field when both teams are out there. You know, Lockett is a stud, and DK's coming into his his, his own and, and proving that he belongs in the league and was way underdrafted. But Ertz and Goddard are almost impossible to guard I because they have size and speed. Uh, to be fair, I mean, Aguilar is uh, is questionable um, for Sunday. so it, He's also been worthless this year. Yeah, but I mean, so, he, he has been injured almost all year. What uh, What's the guy's name, Greg Hill? Is that him? That's uh, Greg Hill Jr. I think it's Hill. Maybe I'm crazy, but it, he has been a, a welcome addition. Uh, he played quarterback at Houston, um, but he is. Let's see. I think it's yeah, Greg Hill. Let's well, I know the running back that they've been they've been touting. Let's see. Oh, that's the wrong one. I don't know what his name is. It's Greg something. Greg Ward. Greg Ward. That's okay. It. Yeah, he has been a welcome addition. He is. He's kind of a do it all guy. Um, he's been great for the Eagles. So well, I, they I, they brought him in off the woodpile, basically. Um, I believe in Miles Sanders, and and I, I think that guy's going to be a stud for years to come. By the way, uh, you you might be right on that. Um, Greg Ward Jr. Let's see, in the last however many games, he's five eleven, one hundred ninety pounds. But uh, but yeah, let's see against uh, da, 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 da. let's see. All right, 28 receptions on 40 targets for 254 yards, averaging 9.1 yards per catch. Uh, he The last couple of games, he has done pretty dang well. Um, against the Giants, he had six receptions for 43 yards. Against Dallas, he had four receptions for 71 yards. Against Washington, seven receptions for 61 yards. He has been uh, – he's kind of been a go-to guy. 
Yeah, so. and they, they've got another running back that came out of nowhere. Both of these guys just completely off the scrap heap. Boston Scott, who everybody in Philadelphia is falling in love with, gotten 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 on fire about or whatever. And just, just no these nobody knows where these guys have come from. But but they found a way to to make them do something. You know, <laughs> it's been uh it it's been interesting. It's been very interesting for them. So yeah, I'm I'm rolling Eagles here. Um, plus the two and a half. I, I think they're going to win the game outright. And it, I I think coaching match like these are all interesting coaching matchups. But you know you got uh, you got Pete Carroll against Doug Peterson. Like I love this coaching matchup. I think this is going to be great. Like this will be a fun game to have. Uh, we were talking. I think before we started recording about whether or not NBC got to pick this game. Yeah. And I think I, they did. I think they probably did. I think this is the best this is the best game of the uh of the weekend. Are these the last two coaches to win a Super Bowl not named Bill Belichick? I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. Doug I'm Peterson to, and I know the Pats won three of the last five. No I'm other no other AFC team has won it. Nope. So um, it had, I think I think this is so. This is the matchup of the the last two Super Bowl winners from the Bill. NFC and not the Patriots. That's uh, that's interesting. That's <laughs> interesting. So yep. All right. So here's our rundown. We got. Uh, let's see. I've got the Texans. You've got the Bills. Only one we're going head to head on. So yeah. let's hope we do good this week, and at least we'll, one of us will we'll maybe win them all. Yeah, you've you've got two underdogs and two favorites. I've got three favorites and one underdog. I uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be a good uh, it's gonna be a good weekend. Good weekend. All right. Is there anything else we need to hit? That's it, brother. All right. Winning cures everything. Of course, go check out winningcureseverything.com. Go check out smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN for twenty percent off. That's W I N. And uh, in any order over forty bucks is gonna be free shipping. And tunicatravel.com. They are the South's premier sports gambling destination. Go check them out for yourself. And that is going to wrap it up for this week. We will be back. Uh, we're going to try and change up the schedule maybe a little bit next week. But uh, but we'll let you guys know what we end up doing. We're looking forward to a, a good 2020, man. Let's, uh, let's get started off with some winners. I can't wait. We will talk to you all again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.